spaces that are good campfire spaces, another word for lecture. Another kind of primordial space that's so important is watering hall space. Now, I, I hope that you were learning something earlier today, but I'm sure that you learned more as you got up and you got beverages as well, because when you interact with each other, it releases that kind of social, emotional intelligence. And you learn new things. It's very important to build those spaces into our facility. It's not the same thing as a hallway. A hallway or a corridor implies this is built to get me from point A to B. That's its function. It's not a learning space. If we want to change those circulation space to learning spaces, if we rename them as watering holes, which is, you know, in that after the campfire, uh, some people heard a lot of those things at the campfire in the story, but it was the next day when they went to the watering hall and they talked to someone and they said, hey, you know, last night when I was hearing that story that Albert was telling about how to hunt moose, you got to be... <laughs> you got to go where the moose are, when they're there. <laughs> uh, this is a watering hole in Japan. And that's an outdoor space. This is where they eat. But you could do something like that with an atrium. So it's still possible to have that kind of space even in Regina. The Esplanade Library in Singapore, where they have a cafe. And even though it's a very public area, I got the feeling looking at these two people that they were in their own kind of independent world. And we talked about this briefly yesterday. The idea of cave space is not just about space. A cave could be your car. You could be driving along and thinking about what you need to do tomorrow, and that's a kind of cave space. It could be in your shower. It could be a space in a, uh, in a school where there's soft seating or in a library. It's important that we incorporate campfire, watering hall, and cave spaces all in our schools. And then there's real life. That's one of the other key kinds of spaces, and I'm using space in a broad way. You can see that this young man is learning something. I wish I knew what he was learning. <laughs> but this is what life is like. A lot of the things we discover are outside of school. And we want to create in school, we want to bring as much as possible this opportunity for real life learning. Another peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning break. Answer your question, what do you see in this picture? This is Australian Math and Science Academy in Adelaide, South Australia. Do you see campfire space, lecture, cave, watering hole, which is a form of collaborative space? Yes. Uh, Point out that we've probably had at least three of the, of the modes uh, in the picture. The cave, the watering hole, and the campfire. Because you have the ones that are doing their independent study by themselves and doing as they please. But with the watering hole, you also have the groups that can come and go as the group and maybe talk to other groups and get more ideas intellectually. And with the campfire, you also have the teacher in the background so that you get the information from him at the same time. The campfire, you think of so many people sitting around with a, listening to someone. but the the watering hole is some place where people go, uh, come and go from, so that it's uh, it's it's a changing uh, it's a yeah. it's a changing space. That's what you come up with for a cave as in independent. But I don't associate those things together. I think of caves as being shut in, individualistic as opposed to independent. If I'm thinking of being independent uh, and that kind of learning modality. I'm thinking of hilltops or summits or places where I can look out. And yeah, I may be uh, an individual at that time, but I'm always in relation to other individuals because I'm, I'm seeing or sensing them in what I'm, what I'm doing. That's, That's a terrific point. Because I think fundamentally all learning is, is social as well in relation to others. So a cave shuts me off. It prevents me from associating with others and being near others. I've been there all by myself. We were, next we're going to go on to design patterns and talk about those a little. And maybe that we want to develop a new pattern for Regina called Hilltop. A lot of our students, I think it's fair to say, their houses are pretty pretty busy. Uh, and you don't always have a little space even in the house. And that can happen. And, and so it would be nice for those kids if they had a space somewhere, which was just theirs. Um, and this is my little world right here. <laughs> I control this part. And we see kids all the time who just come up to us and say, I just need, 
I just need to be alone here for a while. I mean, things are happening in my life, and you want to talk to someone maybe in half an hour or 15 minutes, but right for this time, I need to be alone and then I'll talk to someone. About it. And uh, so it'd be nice to have that to incorporate so it's easier to find them. I, I also think the camp is a really great idea because, I don't know, when you're in a class, like, there's other people, they may be talking or something, and I, well, myself, I know I like to work in a nice, quiet place. I work really well independently, and I like when it, there's a place where it's all quiet, and I don't want to be all by myself, but, like, I like to where, it, where it's quiet, and I can get more work done that way. I think about, like, the nocturnal animals, like the bats, like, it's a close-knit family, and when you have problems like that, you just want to be alone with maybe some of your friends that are your family away from home. So having a space that you could sit and maybe talk and share and do even work with them would be a really positive area.